Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is that you're listening or watching. Or watch it. It's just out of sync this week, mate, at this yeah. latest episode of Turkaz Podcast with me, Joe Rebens, and as usual, my friend, Simon Talner. How are you doing, mate? You all right? I'm very well, thank you very much, you. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. The last podcast of 2020. Not ever. And what what a year it's been, eh? podcast of 2020. Well, on a personal level, well, not personal for me, but even personal for me, but that's not what I'm going to say. Personal level for the podcast, it's been a good year. We've gone from just being a podcast to being like a fan channel sort of vibe now as well. Watch alongs, fan reactions, match reactions, other things on there as well. Interviews with two professional footballers, albeit one's kind of semi retired, even though he's not retired. Obviously, David Jones and Matt Lawton. Obviously, Ian Wright as well. So, another one, I forgot the main one with an actual retired professional footballer. So, yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a shit year for. Uh, everything else, but at a podcast level, it's been a good year. But that gives us a perfect bridge into something you just mentioned off camera. Obviously, the news broke today at the day of recording, Wednesday, that um, Burnley and the, the majority of the country really is now in uh, tier four. So we are now further away than ever <laughs> of uh, getting fans back into the stadiums. Now it's looking like it's going to surpass a year. Um, at, at I guess it's not confirmed, obviously, but at I guess it's looking like it's going to surpass a year from the time that we will be allowed on the turf, because the last time was Tottenham in March, wasn't it? I can't remember the exact date, March 8th, something like that. Um, um, but yeah. It's going to get it's gonna get past a year, isn't it? We're not going to be on the turf for over a year. That's just insane. It's, it's something that we never expected at the time, especially when he said, oh, we're going into lockdown for a month. It was like panic stations, but almost, dare I say it, a little bit of excitement of, oh, it's his new, it's exciting. It's a, it's yeah. a bit, some people even, myself at times, felt like it was a bit of an holiday. And then as the, the money stock sort of like dwindled down and then <laughs> it suddenly got serious and it's, it doesn't seem like it's got an end goal at the minute and that's my frustration. I don't know who's talking about that saying we need, it, we need to know exactly what's happening. And then today he told us exactly what was happening, kind of, mm-hmm. in, in, in well, Boris's weird sort of way. He, he hadn't told us an end date. He hasn't told yeah. us if he's no. financially supporting us any different or the same or or how long he's going to support it. I don't think you'll ever get an end date. It's obviously it'll be when the cases go down or 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 I'm gonna say completely disappear, but let's face it, it's never gonna completely disappear. It's gonna be when the cases go down. Or the term that they used last time, I don't know if he's used the same term this time, is flatten the curve. You know, go going back to what you just said there though, before you before you jump in, I feel the same. Like at first I remember the day that the, the country got locked down, because I watched his press conference live. I will, I would, I would work at Willie Hill, and I was, I was like the last person. They were like, right, make sure you take lights off on your way out. Like, oh my god, this is like insane! Oh my god, I went it's home, weird, started playing Call of Duty, loads, got right into it, just started drinking beers. It was dead sunny as well. Yeah, the class would have sat outside, sitting in weather. Yeah. Now what? Seven, eight, nine months on, everyone's fed up with it. There's been a lot of issues, obviously, both COVID and non-COVID related and stuff, and. And things like that. So yeah, don't feel bad for saying that because I think a lot of people will totally agree with you. Yeah, that is difficult. But what I was going to say is that do you know what we need to start doing? Do you remember like, sort of like two years ago? Uh, there was a start, maybe even slightly longer, if I'm honest with you. But I think like BT Sport started the venture of VR football, and you could put put that. You maybe could get the free thing that you put on your you put your yeah. phone in it. You could watch the match in VR, and then it's kind of not been abandoned, but it's been put on the shelf a little bit. Uh, and I thought this is like the perfect time to re redevelop that system because if you said to us, listen, BT Sport are show, or Amazon are showing the Burnley game at Turf Moor and you can sit in the fucking Bob Lowe stand, how cool would that be at the minute? We take that, wouldn't we? Any day, any day. Yeah, I'd even take the Bob Lowe stand. Like you've yeah, exactly. the worst stand there, but yeah. <laughs> I would even take that. Uh, but yeah, if, if you're listening, BT, Sky Sports, Amazon, that sounds like something that you've got enough money to do. Um, get on with it and uh, me and Simon will take 50% well Simon can have 30 I'll take 20 because um, it is his idea um, but it's my um, medium uh, and then obviously you do the hard work so you can take the other 50% Amazon um, but if you're listening there you go that's your plan um, apart from all that though apart from the tier 4 and apart from the fact that it's going to be an absolute age until we get back on the turf how are you anyway because obviously as you've said you were on Sky News um, but you're on Sky News because you are a, a hairdresser or should I say a business owner of a hairdresser's um, so it's not good news for, for you and your business at the end of the day, is it? So not not to put a big no, downer on on you in the episode, but how, how are you anyway? I'm good, mate. I'm very good. I, I've got a lot to be grateful for. You know, I mean, I try and turn it into 
a positive. I've had the worst breaks I've had this year. I've had Both double fever. Yeah, and then I've had the business breaks. I've had a lower income, but I'm still here. So, I'm, you know, there's a lot of people that have got a lot worse off than me. So you just got to keep reminding yourself of that. And uh, I'm quite good, mate. I've got time with my family that I wouldn't have had. And ironically, it's probably the best time for me to ever have my worst breaks. Breaking both my fevers yeah. when we're in lockdown anyway. So I yeah. didn't miss a massive chunk of the world, <laughs> no, which is what my massive anxiety is when I break bones, is that I'm missing out on work and doing things. And... But I'm good. Happy days, happy days. It don't affect me in the slightest. Or I, no, it just work I, I, I work from home. So, uh, it benefits. I, I have I have now. Obviously I lost oh, a massive I lost a massive chunk of, of money between March and what right, July. I, I didn't work one day. Um but now I'm I'm working more uh, working from home. But having said that, obviously with it, but with the majority of the country going into tier four, a lot of bookmakers will be closing and stuff. I haven't heard anything off the bosses at William Hill yet. They could end up saying, Look, Joe, you're the freelancer, so we've got to protect the staff. We're not gonna give you any more. Um shifts until february we don't know that uh i've not heard anything yet so fingers crossed um but it's all moved to online now anyway and that's what it did last time and it carried on going uh, and that's what i work i work in online so fingers crossed for me fingers crossed for everyone else it's not just about me and Simon, obviously and fingers crossed yeah um, for, everybody for all you right. guys um now just before we get started chatting about the actual football because we've done the stuff that Garros always gives us shit for so you're just going around houses for 20 bloody minutes shut up and talk about Burnley uh, we will start talking about Burnley in a minute I promise but just before we do uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors there you go Simon's modelling it if you're watching it on YouTube and Facebook uh, you can see at the bottom of your screen the sponsors are of course Pitch Sports and if you are unaware yet it is a fan hub uh, where you can get on uh, and discuss certain things um, answer some questions that we will put up there you can talk to the fans choose your lineups give you reviews at the end of the game and things like that and make predictions before the game. So, um, And they are doing something new soon in the new year. Um, so fingers crossed, keep, keep an eye out for that. Um, and as well, just at the bottom of your screen, now if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, if you don't already, please do follow us on all the relevant social media channels. Just to, it's Turfcast Podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and um, which one have I missed out? Twitter. There you go. Um, and you'll find us there. Um, but yeah, right, we've got a lot to discuss. Um, there's been two games, we've taken three points, um, which I think probably a lot of us would have took, um, but we'll get into that. Um, ultimately, we should have had more points. Um, but normally what I do, I'll normally say, right, Sam, and Leeds United won, Burnley nil, go. Um, cool. But I think so much happened in that game that I think we're going to have to break it down. Um, so we'll start off with the... Let's go straight in for the kill. Let's go straight for the juggler. Let's talk about the, what, fourth-minute decision, whatever it was. Obviously, Leeds United got a penalty after Nick Pope. We'll, we'll, we'll expand a little bit on the bollocks. We will expand on the bollocks. Um, I don't necessarily disagree. In fact, I fully agree, but I'll get into my bit. But Nick Pope, ball over the top, brilliant ball by whoever it was, completely outplayed our defenders. There were nothing uh, the defenders could do. Um, but... Pope, in my eyes, and I think in your eyes as well, dealt with the ball. He made a challenge and he won the ball, which is what I shouted at the time and I still believe that he won the ball. Um, but the referee gave a penalty. What were your thoughts on that decision then, Simon? I've got this sort of bugbear with it because people were actually defending this decision. Uh, Paul Robinson, who I still don't like, people say, oh, he's left well, he's all right. Even the players say, oh, he's more. No, he's fucking... No, and this uh, this didn't help either because he played about saying, three games for us all, didn't he? Oh, you shit, he's none, no. And then basically he said penalty. Yeah, so he I said, it, that. He said it. He said, but, "Oh, I don't know what he's doing there and things like that." But what is he supposed to do? The ball's gone over the top. It's cut the defence out completely. Is he supposed to stand there and let Bamford run around him and slot into an empty net? No, he's going to make a challenge. And what I don't understand is if he'd have gone down on the floor and tipped it away with his hand. In the yeah. exact same scenario, but with his hand, everyone would have been like, brilliant. That's that's brilliant, yeah. that real. Because he's gone in with his feet, it looks a bit stronger. And admittedly, it does look more erratic than what it would have done if he's gone down with his hands. But he still wins the, wins the fucking ball. And that, that, to me, is is what you need to do in that situation. All you can do is win the ball. And that's what he did. So this is my thing, right? If that was a defender, there's a couple of issues I've got. If that was a defender who had wrapped his leg around the player, which we've seen a million times... And he wraps it round, and he touches that ball before he touches the player. It does not matter how much of the player he touches, unless his studs are showing. 
they congratulate, they celebrate it, it trends, it's fucking viral. Everyone in the country, in the world, starts saying, what a tackle by some player I've never heard of in France. And then it goes round. Now that, for me, because he's a goalkeeper, why is that different? It is still an unbelievable challenge with his feet. He has won the ball fully, 100%, before player has run into Nick Port. Let's just clarify that as well. He, he, it's a coming together. It's not. He's not clattered him. The player's running towards Nick Port, who stood his ground, stuck his leg out and won the ball. For me, it's a great, great tackle. My second argument with it is, Paul Robinson says that you cannot come out and go through a player like that anymore as a player, uh, as a goalkeeper, right? You can't make challenges like that. You have to do it differently. And he, he explained what he thought was different. But then, literally 10 seconds later, it showed the knee into the back of Ben Mee, which I know we're going to go on to in a minute. But the re reference he used to that is, when you're a keeper and you're coming out in them scenarios, you've got to take everything. Yeah. Well, hang on a minute. Nick Pope just took everything with the fucking ball. So, there you go. That, that's my opinion on the penalty. Bollocks. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. It was bollocks. And I do not understand how people, and not just Burnley fans, because I know a few Burnley fans who disagree with us and think it was a penalty. Uh, just how hey. anybody... Uh, uh, send me the names. I'll send I'll me the offer. Um... <laughs> But I, I just I just don't understand how anyone can think it's Kieran. He's he's won the but I don't think, I don't know what Kieran thinks to be fair. Um, if it's controversial, he'll have said it. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, but I don't think it was Kieran. Um, but I just don't understand. I, I've already said it, but I just don't understand what he can do in that scenario. Is he just supposed to let Bamford run round him and score? No, of course Bamford. not. He's going to make a challenge. But it now, yeah, in the eyes of Paul Robinson and all these. Leeds fans and everybody thinks it's a penalty, he should just apparently disappear into thin air and just go, all right there, there you go, you Tory bastard, you can just run for that, run round us and slot it into the back of there. I don't understand. It always verges on politics, this show. <laughs> it's just Patrick, everyone, everyone knows Pat, Ban uh, Pat Bamford. Patrick Bamford is the Tory bastard footballer because he's just such a Tory. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, let's then move on. One thing I will say, fucking brilliant penalty, Patrick Bamford. Insanely penalty. good penalty. Class. Um, he's still a Tory bastard, though. Uh, and he still cries in his car. Um, and also, what's this fucking bollocks that he did? What's that? A fucking weird, shitty celebration. Get a grip. Um, and then moving on, before I get, go too far uh, again, um, the Burnley disallowed goal. Now, yeah. what on earth? Like, everything about that was wrong. Everything about the referee yeah, blowing his whistle that, early was wrong. The goalkeeper coming out and clattering Ben Mee was wrong. It's just, first of all, it's it's not a free kick to lead, obviously, because Ben Mee is constantly looking at the ball. He's not even backing into the keeper. All right, he's moving backwards, but he's not like physically backing into him. The keeper comes out with his, even if the keeper doesn't have his knee in the air, he still clatters him, but then he also has his knee in the air. Have you seen the picture as well where Ben's back is like that? It's just no. it's like arch so much because the knees in there, his, his back's just ridiculously arch. That can cause a spinal injury, and I'm surprised it didn't. And some Leeds fans, by the way, were still gobbing off on Twitter just after they beat West Brom 5 0, saying, Oh, I'm glad Ben Mee's recovered to score a goal from his horrific spinal injury. Lads, you've just beat West Brom 5 0. What are you still mourning about that for? And it's a ridiculous comment in the first place because Ben Mee was clattered. But then, not only that, the referee, even though he's got it wrong, that's fine. Well, it's not fine, obviously. It's a fucking it's fine, But it, it happens. You get it wrong. But then to get it wrong and blow your whistle so that the VAR can't even look at it, that's just everything about it was wrong. Just everything about it was wrong. It was just fucking ridiculous. And I'm still mad about it now. Well, my point of it what all was, yes, it, everything was wrong. You're right, mate. There's, there's three or four things that we need to sort of highlight in it. The backing in... Um, which caused him to knee him through the back, then try and collect the ball and fail, is a penalty. So yeah. even when the ref blew his whistle, it was post challenge from the keeper. So why VAR has not looked at that and said, you know what, I think you've got this wrong, mate. It's a foul the other way around because it's a massive decision because it's led to a goal. Because he's blown his whistle, he can't then reverse that decision. But what he could have done is... Uh, sorry, he can't reverse that decision and give a goal. He can't give no, a goal. The goal cannot stand. But he can, yeah, he can give a penalty. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That some people were saying on Twitter, though. No, no, sorry. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, you meant the comment of he can't give a goal because he's blown his whistle. My comment is he can definitely give a penalty because the, he's blown it after the challenge. 
So for me, why has VAR not even looked at that and said, no, it's a foul the other way around? It doesn't matter. It's They've just done that to Nick Pope. They said, yeah, ref. I mean, I seen a comment. Who was it? It was the old referee. I think you shared it on Turfcast. Mark and the old referee, He said that if VAR, if they didn't give a penalty, VAR would not have stopped that and given a penalty. And that's my... That's the thing that pisses me off a little bit with VAR because I know they say, oh, we only step in if it's a clear and obvious error. That's but, I, but people error need to that forget le- that term. An error that leads to a goal, is a, it should be in its own category. An error that leads to a red card or a goal or something that's sort of a turning point in a game should be reviewed irrelevant, whether it's clear and obvious. It's a fucking wrong decision that's led to exactly. a, a, a game that we've lost because of. Yeah, and it, like you say, if it leads to a goal, surely that is a big enough error, whether it's clear and obvious or not. But like I said, people do need to forget that term because the clear and obvious thing clearly isn't something that they, that or, they do. It's something that they said originally, but the amount of times that you see in goals chalked off for like minuscule things that aren't clear and obvious, people, that's, that's, that's the main... Yeah, well, yeah, but uh, the, the, even some other decisions, well, our examples are called... <laughs> Think of it at the top of my head at the minute, but people always go, "Oh, that's not really clear and obvious, is it?" But it's it's never been people. It's something they said when they started it. People just need to drop that now because it's not something that they're doing. Has there been? I'm pretty sure at the beginning we've seen a goal disallowed because it shouldn't have been the corner in the first place, even though it's the second phase. I'm pretty mm. sure at the beginning, maybe last season when VAR were a bit more up in the air. Uh, beginning of that season, I'm sure we get seen a goal, and this is what I'm saying: it just simply seems to be in our favour. It seems to, if we was at home, not against Leeds, tell you now that shit wouldn't have happened. No, it, it's it's Leeds. Obviously, as much as a lot of people dislike them and stuff, are obviously a bigger club and Sky Sports and the Premier League do do seem to absolutely jizz the pants over the fact that they're in the Premier League, um, and they do seem to be getting a lot of favourable media coverage. Admittedly, the, the football that they play is good to watch, but. Uh, some of the comments and things like when they got beat 6 2 in Man United, all, all Sky Sports would do is wanking themselves into a coma over it. Whereas when Burnley go to Old Trafford and win 2 0, there's not a word said, or or Crystal Palace go and win there 1 0 or whatever, there's, there's not a word said. Um, but you least get beat 6 2 there, and it's you know, everyone everyone's absolutely bumming them and bumming Bielsa. But, um, but yeah, um, overall performance though, from the league, really well, second half, really especially. well, really well. Um, Second half, especially even first half, right, we didn't create much. And in truth, we didn't create much in the in the first in the second half. But we defended well throughout. There was only really that one, one pass that absolutely cut us open. So, some might say that Leeds took the foot off the gas and just said, "Right, will you try and break us down?" Then that that might be a thing. I just, I don't think that's the case. I think we 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 especially in the second half came out feeling aggrieved and tried to play because we wanted to grab a goal. Obviously, ultimately, it didn't happen, but I think that's mainly because the likes of Dwight and uh, Robbie Brady weren't on the pitch. And I think I said on Twitter, it was such a shame that the one time this season we've had so much possession in the in the teams, in the uh, opposing team's half, yeah. we didn't have our two most creative players on the pitch and it really showed, to be fair. Absolutely, yeah. I think that that's the best point of the game is we actually dominated a game that we probably... I thought we wouldn't have seen the much of the ball, to be honest with you, but we absolutely dominated a game. They, yeah. Bamford even said afterwards, it was a different type of challenge for them. And, you know, even though they passed it in their eyes, I think it was a different type of challenge for us as well. And we passed it to a degree. If it weren't for the referee, mate, we could have gone on and won that game um, because they wouldn't have been sitting so deep because, yeah. they, you know, they're protecting a lead. It's a different mentality. Um, but swings and roundabouts at the end of the day, there will be decisions that are contentious in our favour, hopefully. And we were lacking in creativity with two of our best players for creativity, not on the pitch. So, yeah, I um, agree with that. I'm not bit. worried about that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not too worried about it. Um, it has been an issue throughout the majority of the season, though, when the players are there. But obviously, that's something we've discussed, and I'm sure we will discuss again. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's that's my opinion and Sam's opinion from uh, Leeds United one Birmingham. Hill. But of course, we have the fan reactions as well. Uh, so let's hear what the Burnley fans thought. Uh, of the defeat at Ellen Road. Uh, I've waited to do my fan reaction uh, to today to calm down. Um, absolute fucking joker performance from that referee. Um, that referee should never referee a game of football again, never mind it, Premier League. Totally inadequate. Uh, the first one, Pope, yeah, he's dived in, but he's got the ball first. He's, took, he's got the two on the ball first, then took the man. So it's never a penalty in a month for Sundays. 
Uh, how they are of, of not overturned that is beyond me. And the second one's even worse. An absolute fucking joke. His keeper's come out for it. He, everyone can see in the pictures and the still pictures and the videos. He's fucking put a knee in back of Ben Mee. Be, Mee's got his eye on the ball all, all the time. They both have to be honest, but he's took the me completely clean out. Barnes has put it in. A great finish from Barnes, to be fair. You know, with a few defenders, it works. A great finish uh, and had the composure to carry on and put it in. But it's a fucking absolute joke of a decision. Uh, but to be fair, we never got off, uh, nothing off him all game. Uh, fucking Bamford was fucking whinging all game for fouls in and around him. Um, so was Ailing. Um I thought we more than deserved a point. You know, they probably... Just shaded it for stuff, but fucking second half, we've absolutely bossed it. You know, we've, we've, we've been camped in there off. Look at the stats possession wise. I mean, that's a first Burnley ever been, you know, over the opponents and chances created, chances, shots on goal. But we never, we never just that final ball, you know, I think we missed McNeil and I will say, I think we missed Brady as well. Um, we're just missing that, you know, that final ball. Uh, I think we would have had them too and that added a bit more quality. I think we, we probably would have got a point at least. If not, we'd have probably gone on and won it. Um, but yeah, the referee gave us fuck all all game. Uh, I mean, he booked, he booked Tarke for a challenge on Bamford, and then two minutes later, fucking Ailing's completely took, uh, Dallas has completely took fucking, I think it was Barnes or Wood out, and he's just fucking, and he's just blown for a foul, not even booked him. So uh, yeah, um, it, no wonder Dash felt really aggrieved. Um, it was just a joke of performance. But for the Claret's performance, I thought we played really well. Uh, second half, uh, like I said, we, we totally fucking bossed it, and probably should have got more than a point. Um, I just hope McNeil and Brady are not out too long. Um, Dash again, I don't understand why he didn't start with Jay. Uh, fucking Peters. <sighs> Peters can go for me. I don't know what you know your uh, opinions are, fella Clarence, but he, he's he's not good enough. He's just not up to the pace. Uh, I can see probably why he picks him over Jay, you know, for chucking back and defending, but he just offers nothing. I thought Charlie Taylor were, were Burnley's man at match. I thought he was fucking outstanding against his old club, getting down that left-hand side and trying to create. I thought Ben Mee had a bit of a stinky yesterday. Um, ball watching a few times, you know, him and Tarkin were a bit shaky for first half, second half, stepped it up a gear, but I just thought Ben Mee were a bit shaky yesterday. Uh, I don't think the pitch helped, I don't know if a lot of you noticed it, the, the fucking ball seemed to bobble a lot and uh, the quality of it were, were really poor compared to, you know, not being biased to turf and other surfaces. I thought the pitch were quite poor. Um, but yeah, just really frustrated. Um, it's more frustrating because you know you've played well. You deserve a point. You know you deserve to get a result, a point at least, if not the three. And you've just been fucked over by the officials. Uh, yeah, so it's just really frustrating. Two massive games now. You know, starting tomorrow night against Sheffield. You know, and Fulham. If we pick, I think if we pick six points up from that, or four at least, then I think we'll be fine. Still think we'll be fine. You know, I know West Brom got a good result yesterday at Liverpool. They picked up a point. Uh, so only us and us and them have uh, stopped Liverpool winning at Anfield in this last, you know, seventy odd matches. It's a great point for them. Um, you know they've they've switched managers now. They've brought Big Sam in over over Slavon, and Sam has a uh, an history, a track record of keeping teams up. But I don't think he will this year. That's my honest opinion. That's not just being bad. I don't think West Brom have got the quality that will be needed to to stay up. I think Sheffield are gone, uh, especially if we beat them tomorrow night. I fancy us tomorrow night. Um, I just hope you know we we get McNeil back at least. I think McNeil probably will play tomorrow. He's, he's probably looked at it and and. Uh, Dash and probably thought, no, I'm not risking it, not with two massive games coming up against uh, Sheffield United and Fulham at home. Uh, so onwards and up, cl upwards, Clarets. Um, all the best for 2021. See you next year. Yeah, all we can say, fuck Sky Sports, fuck the referee, fuck the FA, fucked a lot of them because I cannot understand how we've not got a fucking point in that game. Um, a lot of people call me out for it, but I still think that the Pope penalty is very harsh. If he goes down with his hands and he deflects the ball with his hands, it's called a great save. But if he goes down with his foot, even though like he deflected the ball away, it's a penalty. I don't get that. Nothing more needs to be said about the Ben Mee one. Imagine if the FA invested in millions to uh, be able to review that decision like Sky Sports says. We have the, re we have the replays here. Mm, imagine if the FA did that. Well, I wonder what we could do then. Rest of the rest of the first half, I think people unfairly were calling out the lads for their performance. But if you've had your head in the game, then well, and you know the referee's going against you, your mentality changes, and you don't get the easy passes that you might have done before. So can't blame. Come out in the second half, 
The only thing I can really criticise is imagine if we had two strikers on the pitch who could score. With all that possession we had, with all that pressing we did, we still can't score a goal, which is really worrying, to be honest. I know we scored against Wolves, but we should be able to be score from all that pressure. Um, and then the referees is doing everything he can to fucking give Leeds everything he wants. Dice rightly at the end of the game, asking for a few minutes to make his decision shown. I hope after this we find out that he's come out and um, he's slated the ref and he gets a fine. I hope the, the club plays it because fucking hell, if that guy's ever in the middle of the middle of the two teams whilst we're playing again, I'll be livid. The FA should be demoting this guy, fucking stripping him of all his refereeing rights and everything because I've never, ever in my life seen such a terrible refereeing performance. And that's all I have to say about that. Anti-football here and I'm fucking fuming! Call that a fucking referee! Absolute bullshit! Classic 1-0 to the referee! What the fuck was that? Clearly, Pope got a fucking toe to the ball! It's not a penalty! If any other player, a defender, made that tackle, it would be scrutinised! Frame by frame, on bar, to check if there was a touch on the ball. There was a touch on the ball. So it should have been overturned. Clear and obvious error by the referee. Why, if the keeper makes that challenge, is it not a fucking good tackle? It's bollocks. Absolute bollocks. Where the fuck is VAR? Oh, fucking fuming I am. Fucking fuming. Then... To top it off at the other end, clearly it's it's a fucking goal. How the fuck did he dream a free kick up for Leeds out of that? Fucking Ben me looking away from the fucking goal. Keeper clatters into the back of him and knocks him over. And, and he gives him a fucking free kick. If anything, it should have been a free kick to us, a penalty. But we fucking scored. So what the fuck? Why do we get these clowns refereeing our games? I bet they don't have this fucking chance of refing Man City and Liverpool, do they? It's absolute bollocks. Oh, it had to be fucking Bamford and all, didn't it? Through one goal for penalty anyway. Fuck that, fuck that. I'm too fuming about referee to even think much about the rest of the game. We give it a good go in second half. We were at him, we pinned him in pretty much. But... Didn't create enough clear-cut chances, to be fair. But fuck me, we deserved a point out of that game. If ever we've deserved a point out of a game, that is it. Leeds got fucking lucky. I've never, t I've not seen a worse performance from a referee in a Burnley game since that second half joking fucking Greece, Olympiakos. Eh? This was just as bad. Dodgy as fuck, I say. Anyway, sorry, I just had to get that off my tits. <sighs> anyway, let's all we can fucking beat Sheffield United the other day, whenever. Oh, I've fucking lost my mind now, honestly. Anyway, onwards and upwards to Clarence. Fuck it, let's go. That's me for now. Take care of yourselves. Ta ra! Do 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 do! Anti football! Fuck the ref! Hi guys, a uh, reaction video for Leeds versus Burnley and I hope you've got a bleep machine ready, Jesus Christ um, a more inept, useless piece of garbage that friggin ran a game in my life Rob Jones or whatever his friggin name is absolute bag of shite I hope he never referees a game at Premier League again but I don't want to get too dragged down shall I say with the referee the, um, ineptitude because well anyway I'll, I'll talk about the game because it's pointless talking about him absolutely pointless so all right well, let's go Leeds 1 Burnley nil. first goal I can see why he's give it but he shouldn't have give it plain and simple uh, Pope's got a right to come out he's got a right to challenge it uh, he gets the ball, well I, th I don't think he gets the ball first, I think they both get the ball at the same time 
but the ball ends up going 30 yards out forward towards like, the byline, sideways-ish. But it went forward. Went with the momentum of the ball went with Pope. Um, Bamford's just a little crybaby. You fall down up, freaking wind blew him anyway. But that's beside the point. Um, I can understand why the, why the refs give it, but then again, it shouldn't have been given. So uh, it was a good penalty. Give him his due. It was a good penalty. It, it put it away really well. Um, I thought. As a whole, first 45, really poor. I thought we were really poor off it. I think it all stems from Ben Mee, to be quite honest with you. Um, he was poor. And the rest of the team seemed to feed off the way that he is. That, that That's how I find it. And because he wasn't having a great game, I, I got, the rest of them didn't have a great game. Um, but we'll, we can move on from that. Let's go to the second half. Second half are a lot better. Second half, a lot better. 45 minutes of pleasure. That's what it were, apart from not scoring. Needed to score. Um, did all the hard work, did all the groundwork. Just couldn't finish it off. Um, like I say, not talking about that referee, dick. Um, should have been a penalty. If it weren't a goal, which, to be fair, Barnes put it away really well. Uh, should have been a penalty, playing as. He went through him like a freaking steam terrain. Knowing, tried to get the ball. Bollocks. Shit keeper. I'm glad we don't have a keeper like that in our goal. But putting it this way, to say we couldn't score against him. Hey, dear me. I've never, never seen such a shit keeper in all my life. Um, but performance wise, hell of a lot better. Hell of a lot better. Um, Josh Benson, I'm really pleased that I thought him getting the start, but it was it was quite anonymous throughout the game. Um, maybe because that's been on the right. Not I'm not going to have a go at him. I mean, he's a young lad, le- playing his you know learning his trade, playing his trade. Um, I've seen a lot of good things in his previous performances. Um, so I just hope that he starts getting more game time. That's all I can say. Um, Charlie Taylor for me, man at match uh, again. Absolutely brilliant. He's found a vein of form at the minute, which which is absolutely brilliant. Um, Barnes and Wood. Barnes, I'd give him a 7 out of 10. Wood, I'd give him 1. Absolutely woeful shit. How he gets a place in that team now this season, I don't know. I've been a big advocate, uh, Chris. Uh, he scores some great goals. He leads the line really well. This season, he hasn't done. He hasn't shown anything. Yes, he scored last week. Woo woo. Uh, but he just hasn't shown anything. He doesn't deserve to be starting. I'm sorry, he doesn't deserve to be starting. That's my opinion. Um, but then again, who does he start? You've got Barnes. Does Barnes and Jay play? Are they two similar kind of player? We don't have anybody else. Where with Vidra? Vidra weren't even in the squad. Is he injured? Or is he now waiting for his move in January? Who knows? Um... Anyway, to her fights. Uh, glad to be back on. Uh, I've done my little rant. So that was the fan reaction from Burnley's defeat at Ellen Road. Uh, a lot of um, emotional people there, I think it's uh, fair to say. Shout out to everybody that sent their fan reaction in. Obviously, with that one being a bit of um, an emotive game and a few emotive decisions, um, we had quite a few for that one, so it was good to see. So thank you for everybody who got involved. Um, next up then... Um, we'll might as well talk about the Sheffield United game. It's a bit more positive. Not as much happened, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, I think I put on Twitter that it was a bit of a snooze fest, and I think that's, to be honest, a bit of an understatement. Um, but because we do the watch along, sometimes I don't really notice how bad a game is until I just sit back and think about, like, Jesus, literally nothing happened. Um, and looking back at that game, literally nothing happened. Um, it's We got a goal from a set piece, typical Burnley, brilliant head about Ben Mee. I don't know if you've seen it since... But his three defenders are on him. Three defenders, and he's not exactly towered above them. They're all at a similar high, and he's just it's just the way he cranes his neck and just angles it into the bottom corner. Brilliant header, brilliant goal for Ben Mean. It's good to see uh, Ben getting a goal, because one of Ben's few criticisms from people that just want to give him a criticism for the sake of it is that he doesn't score enough goals because of several centre-halves score goals. Uh, Keno used to chip in with quite a few, to be fair, compared to Ben Mean and even Tarky as well. 
Um, but yeah, it's good to see Ben Mee get on the, goal, uh, on the score sheet and obviously keep a clean sheet. Yeah, it's something that I've uh, I've criticised. Not criticised, criticised is the wrong word, but I've almost begged our centre halves, like, oh, you, you know, you want more goals from them because we are so set piece dominant and reliant in a game that it's different nowadays, though, because the set pieces aren't like what they used to be. When like, in the last couple of years, we we're in swinging them more instead of out swinging them. So it is it, more glancing headers and second balls than it is powerful defenders nowadays. It's not that kind of that's the kind of set piece game anymore. And high lines from the de- defense, you know, that's made it a different game as well. It's completely took out the sort of big man, isn't it? Really. Um, but it's good to see because he's, he's a massive player for us. So it's good to see him get a. You know his moment in the in the spotlight for me because it's not it's always a bit of a doggy dogged uh, role is defending in it. You know you're you're tackling, you're giving him fouls, you you're winning horrible headers, and Ben Me gets hurt quite a lot. So it's good to see him yeah. get his little moment in the sub. Well, he had a tissue up his nose, didn't he, for the for the Wolves game for like ten minutes in the Wolves game. Uh, and another thing, <laughs> yeah, we're going to say talking of tissue, and it brings me on nicely to the next issue. Um, I want to talk about, but remember Chris Wood, uh, the Sheffield United game. He had he had a, a gob full of bog roll, didn't he? We called it on the watch log, running around for the last ten. He doesn't have me for here because I know what's coming. But yeah, he did. He, he's a um, he's. It was an interesting one, but we had to have him on because at the end of the day, he would have been stood at the sideline for five minutes with it. Yeah, we're not being able to play, so you can't criticise him for doing it. In fact, you should be sort of praised, I guess, for just thinking, "No, fuck it, I've got to get on and help the boys and get this win." But he did look ridiculous. <laughs> he did, didn't he? It just made me laugh when he were, he, at one point he ran with it. And not, I don't think he had the ball, but he ran to close down the defender and it was just flopping around in his mouth like that. And I was laughing my head off at watch along. It was one of the better moments in that game because, like I said earlier, yeah, there wasn't much happened. for there. Apart from um, Wild and nearly crying. Yeah, but speaking of Chris Wood, um, I know he got a goal against Wolves, um, but I, I, don't know if it's, I don't know if it's Chris Wood being out of form and a bit poor in this game and it was a similar thing in the Leeds game or it's another case of not a lot of creativity but it was in truth another poor performance uh, in my opinion um, from what I've defended what time and time again on this podcast and I, I still will stand by everything that I said I do still think he is the best finisher of a ball that we've got at Turf Moor is the best finisher of, of a ball that we've had excuse me since the Charlie Austin days um, so I do want to stand by him, but at the same time, now you know, like because Barnsley was dropped for a bit, wasn't it? Because Barnsley started yeah. the season off quite poor, uh, probably because yeah. of his injury, his hernia injury coming back from that. But he was dropped for a bit, and it was Wooden Jay up front for a couple of months. Now Barnsley's come back into the side; he's doing really, really well. I think maybe now it might be time to sort of like give Woody a break for three, maybe four games. But the problem is we have at the minute is obviously Jay wasn't playing, uh, wasn't even on the bench for the Sheffield United game, so he. He might be out for a prolonged period of time that we don't know about. I'm sure Dash and and, and whatever will talk about it in the in uh, in in a pre-match press conference if we have one. Because obviously, the full of games in doubt. That's another debate. Um, but I think for me, if we had the opportunity, it's probably time to try Jay and Barnes. I think now I said it time and time again. I've I've always said I will start Chris Wood, and I still will. I just want to give him three or four games out, and then maybe bring him back in after that. Even if Barnes and, and Jay are doing well, bring Wood back in, knowing that he's the best finisher of the ball. But what do you think? It's an interesting one because it, it's. I understand the strikers on there to score goals, but not every striker's on there scoring goals wins your matches. You know, it, you could have a, a striker on there scoring two goals but doing nothing else. Yeah. Uh, and it does bring a lot, like showing the commitment, running on there with his lip flapping out, and um, you know, leaving him on for the defensive side of his game as well on set pieces is, is a strong part. And I think we only had three shots on target in the Sheffield game. Uh, we score one. I'll check that for you in a second. But he, do you remember the Barnes one that everyone was criticising that Barnes should have scored? I think it was yeah. a great save. Um, I think it was Wood that nodded that down on a plate for him to make it such a good sort of position. And sometimes, like you said, it's not everything that they do with the ball. Even some players, it's just being on the pitch and the presence is enough. And when you've gone, we've gone the last nine games, we've lost two of them. One of them was against Man City, which I think you can chalk off as fair enough. Yeah. And the other was a referee in contentious decision. So when Chris Woods played in all nine of them games, and we've only lost two, that you wouldn't even argue about as a Burnley performance, really, other than the City game, but you kind of expect it. I don't think it's it's a reason to change a team at the minute. I feel like 
yes, he's not scoring goals, but the team's performing. It's like saying Ben Mee doesn't score enough headers, so don't send him up for him. Yeah, obviously the flip side he's of that would be, him, yeah. be an argument of people saying, no, we're winning these games, most of them, because like we did against Sheffield United, because we defended well. But going forward, there's still quite a lot to be left to the imagination. And, and it's, I, I, like I, I said, I don't think it is just... Yeah, I, I don't think it is just what it, I think it is the front four, including the wingers. Because, um, like I said, Dwight and Brady wasn't there against um, Leeds. And obviously, Dwight wasn't there against um, Sheffield United. And I do think, I've said it time and time again, I do think Woody works better with Jay. Um and obviously Jay was missing for these two games as well. Um, or well, he wasn't missing for the Leeds game, but uh, he was on the bench. And I know he was for the Wolves game as well. Um, but I do think Woody works better with him uh, because Jay tends to do the job of of dropping back into the into the the gap between the midfield and the strikers, getting the ball and blah blah blah. I do think the goals will come for Woody. Um, yeah. I've said it time and time again. For me, I'll say it again. He is our best striker. He's just one thing I said a lot last season, and I said a lot at the start of this season is I feel like he's a confidence player. And I just feel like at the minute that confidence looks totally shot. And I think it'll be good for him to miss out on a few games and then come back fresh and then hopefully get a couple of goals and then just it absolutely snowball from there and keep rolling on, in my opinion. Yeah, hopefully, mate. Like, like I said, it, it, for me, it's very difficult to criticise individuals when the team's doing all right. I find it difficult. And it's, I said the same in the positive note as well. When you asked me to pick a man of the match for the Sheffield game, it's hard to pinpoint who was actually a standout performer in that game when the yeah. team just all did the job. That's all it was. Yeah, fair enough. I think I think we defended very well. And that is, of course, uh, why Ben Mee, I've already announced it on Twitter, why Ben Mee did win the man of the match. But he defended well and he got the goal. Um, so it makes perfect uh, perfect sense. They're getting all press, aren't they, again? Ben That's good. To get you know, Tarky and Ben getting like oh, in the last six games, they've had six clean sheets in nine games, or I can't remember the start, I just made that up. But uh, it's going on the sort of like footy Twitters, you know, the yeah. stat ones and things. And it's good to yeah. see that they're getting the praise that we've been, it's been our pedigree of the Premier League, it's been the two centre halves, whoever the combination has been, is to stay keep us sort of solid at the back and we're built from there, including the goalkeeper, obviously. Yeah, and just going back to the point about Ben Mee. Look at where our form was picked up. It's no coincidence yeah. our form picked up massively yeah. when Ben Mee came back into the side. Now, I know Tarky didn't start the season as well, but I think I, th- I think they both just need to be together. I don't think it's just coming in because Ben Mee's there. I think it's because that's when them two started playing together. I think if, if Ben Mee was injured, um, sorry, if Tarky was injured and it was just Ben Mee playing alongside Kevin Long, I don't think we'd do as well as we are doing now. Them two need to be there. And that's the massive worry for me, obviously, because I can't see Tarky being here um, after the summer, I think I think he will move this summer. Um, and good luck to him. It's something he, he wants. That's fair enough. Um, but it is a worry uh, for me. But I think, yeah, I think it just goes to show how valuable is the word uh, that Ben is to us when our form has picked up massively since he's come back into the side. Yeah, Dash picks his captains for a reason, mate. And look at the shambles of a season we had last year when uh, we were begging uh, the season before last. Sorry, when we were begging for Heaton to be in. And uh, as soon as sort of that captain's appearance comes, he might not actually need to do anything physically yeah. in that game. It's just his presence. And the same with Ben Mee. We've said this before. It makes you as a defender next to Ben Mee comfortable knowing that he's there. You don't have to watch for him doing anything. You can just do your job and that's it. Yep, fair enough. Well, that's what we thought of the Sheffield United win as Burnley beat Sheffield United 1-0 at Turf Moor. Um, and here's what the Burnley fans thought um, of uh, from the fan reaction. After the Sheffield United game, um, I didn't do one for Leeds because I waited to calm down and then I got sidetracked with something, but it's probably for the best anyway because it just would have been a sweary rant. Um, but last night, that was a Sean Dyche, Burnley defensive masterclass. That's Burnley being Burnley, that. Um, I think I've said it before, but the impact that Ben Mees had since he's come back is unbelievable. Um, he's probably the most underrated player in the team. I don't think we really appreciate the value he, he brought until he wasn't in the team. Um, but it's no coincidence that like we've got better since he's come back. That's that's definite. Um, also, the same for Louts as well. I think Louts has been consistently good um, over the last few games. Didn't put a foot wrong again yesterday. Um, same for all the defence, to be fair. Um, it's a shame Taylor had to go off because I think he would have been our main attacking threat, which is uh, again was a bit of an issue yesterday. But um, it's good to see Brady um, put another shift in. Um, this will please Johnny T, but I think he's um, he's like a new signing. 
um, to use that cliche that no one wanted to use, but I'm going to use it. Um, it is like having a new signing. He's another, you know, um, attacking threat. Um, seems to be able to stay fit now. Um, so that's that's good to know. Um, but as I say, Taylor going off was was bad news. I think he, he was um, our main attacking threat with Dwight out um, on that left-hand side. And he was really effective at Leeds going doing that as well. And I think if he'd have been playing, we probably would have had a few more goals yesterday. The um, the lack of attack and create and creating of chances was again it was there again yesterday. I, didn't, I don't think we had a shot after the goal. I don't think we had another shot on target or even a shot. Um, so obviously that that is going to be an issue. But um, if we get if we can get Dwight back pretty quickly and carry this form going forwards, then then we'll pick some more points up. I think um, Fulham game's a massive one now. If we can. If we can get three points out of that, then we've cracked it really. And if Dwight's back, I think we'd have scored more yesterday and we probably would have got um, at least a point on Sunday. Although, obviously, we, we all know what else we were fighting there. Um, Barnes looked fit again. Um, I think I said earlier in a match reaction that he looked a bit out of um, off, off the pace a little bit, but he looks like he's back in now. I thought he put himself about really well yesterday. Um, shit, I was in his way through it, um, as he does. Um but well, I think Chris Wood's really suffering from this lack of um, chance creation that we've that, that we've mentioned. Um, he's not the sort of player who's gonna get the ball and create a chance out of nothing. He needs the chance to go and put it in, and they're not coming. Um, so he's just looking a little bit lost at the minute. Um, but once this, once the service starts to come in, he will put them away because you know I agree with Joe. I think he is the best finisher at the club. And once the chances come his way, and he's banged one or two in, then they'll flow. Um, but it's good to see Barnsley looking more like himself. Um, but the thing that I'm most pleased about is that we've we've sort of put Sunday behind us. It would have been easy to sort of go in heads dropped, another defeat that we didn't deserve. Everyone's against the sort of thing, but we went in and we we put a fight up and we played really well. It was Burnley being Burnley, as I say, and and there was no sulking. The lads didn't shrink. They stood up and 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 got stuck onto it. But the also thing I like is that we're playing a bit smarter as well. Um, you know, we're drawing fouls and we're disrupting Chef United's um, attack when they try to get one going and. Just it's things that other teams do all the time. Just these dodgy sort of professional fouls and stuff. We were just doing them and having little niggles, which, which was good. It's part of the game these days, whether we like it or not. And you've got to do it. And I thought we did that really well yesterday. And that's probably because Barnes is back to being himself a little bit. Um, Benson, I thought he'd done well. Um, I think, like Dai said, he's playing out of position, so it's hard to judge him. But I think every game he comes on, it can only be good for him. It's good for his confidence, good for his experience. And I think he'll, he'll be a good player, but... Westy and Brown, oh man, I can't speak highly enough about them too. What the midfield uh, machine is um, unbelievable. Um, can't speak highly enough for them. Um, kept things moving along nicely. I think I think we're back now. Um, I think this time last year we were having a bit of a dip. Performances weren't there in December and around Christmas last year. And I think we've had that dip already. Um so hopefully that's it and hopefully we can crack on and have a good season still. Um, but it's just these injuries just keep creeping in. You know, I think um, you know Taylor's probably going to miss a couple of games. You think you get everyone back and then another bout of injuries come in. Um, but, you know, fingers crossed this takeover that seems to have been going on for forever um, gets done. And uh, Daesh has more than 30 quid to spend in January. Um, God knows who's on his list. He'll probably be shitting himself at, at the riches he can spend now. But... Uh, Hopefully we get a few more quality players in and um, we can crack on the second half. Have a good one, Clarets. See you next year. Hiya! How we doing? Anti-football here! Eh? So, another three points in bank for Clarets. Woohoo! Weren't exactly a classic, were it? But what could you expect, eh? Two games in two days. But main thing is we won, isn't it? Could have made it a lot easier for ourselves if we just take us bloody chances. I don't know. That one for Barnes, early doors. Oh, good save from keeper, to be fair. But he should be putting them away. Come on. And then, uh, Wood. Wood. Oh, head it down, lad. If he just did it down. All right, it's another good save from keeper. But it's very easy for him. He's headed it straight at him. Head it down. You know, bounce, goes under. You're up to good. Well, at least Ben May showed him how it's done, didn't he, front corner. Ooh, good lad. Good old Ben me. And Brady. Brady, that cross for Wood in first place and then cross up corner. Two belting crosses then. Are we seeing the best of Brady? He's definitely getting somewhere near, isn't he? 
Just so we can keep bloody fit. Keep fit. So, second half. Oh, back to the wall job. Second half, weren't it? Ooh. Not that they did that much, really, did they? They had a lot at ball, but, you know, we kept them at arm's length, really, didn't we? They look knackered, Jeff. They down, aren't they, Sheffield United? But anyway, sod them. What we to look was for Clarets, eh? i tell you what. Early doors in uh, December, Turf Gas put out a tweet. He went, how many points we're going to get from these games? Arsenal, Villa, Wolves, Leeds United and uh, Sheffield United. And I stuck my neck out. I said, 10 points. I was being optimistic at the time, I thought. Well, you know, it must have been one of my better days. <laughs> But I got it spot on. Ten points, eh? From six points to ten points. No, six points. I'm shit at math, me. Six points to sixteen points. So that's ten points. Yeah, yeah, I've got it now. In less than, what, twenty odd days? I don't know. Hey, it's good going, whatever, isn't it? And what's an upwards for clarets into New Year? Eh? I'll be drinking a Benny or not on New Year's Eve. Toast the new year and say a big fuck off to 2020. What a shit out of a year. All right, that's me for now. Take care of yourselves. Ta ra! Do 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 do. Anti football. Do 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 do. Anti football. Boo! Right, so that's what the Burnley fans thought of the Clarets. 1-0 win at Turf Moor against Basement Club Sheffield United, who look all but doomed to me. I cannot see them getting out of it now. Um, just quickly before we do move on, um, unfortunately, there was all, we didn't put a fan reaction out on YouTube for that game um, because uh, only two people sent them in. But it's one of them. It just Nothing happened in the game, so I don't have any... Any real issues with it this time? People are like, well, what, what, can I, what can I say? What can I say? So that's fair enough. But if you do want to uh, watch the fan reactions in full on YouTube and stuff, you can head to YouTube. And if we get three minimum, that's when I'm happy to put it out. I think two, it just looks a bit shit. And one, obviously, it looked dreadful. Um, so three minimum, I'm always happy to put it out as a single video. And we will always include it in the podcast as well, because I know people listen to the podcast that um, send the fan reactions in. I just want to mention Simon's shirt that he's wearing. It's a classic Claret's goalkeeper shirt from the Marlon Beresford days um, that we will all of a certain age recognise and I think pretty much any Claret's fan I'll just quickly remove that banner so you can see it more um, any Claret's fan young or old will look at that and just think that is insane it's class isn't it the only yeah. thing that disappoints me is Bristol City have got the design this year yeah they have and Denmark had it in 1992 1993 yeah I think that's where the sort of like Hummel and Martyr and and uh, they, I think Bristol are home, aren't they? That's why they've gone back to that one. Uh, yes. That's the, they're kind of like that was the trend, weren't it, back then, to sort of have a bright, vivid goalkeeper shirt, something that was in your face and obnoxious. And yeah, I loved it. It was like sort of like a big thing for me. But I, the, yeah, I only got it today because of someone called Phil Wilcock who listens to the show. Um, he, he heard my little story about when I was a kid. Obviously, I used to have to play in goal, and, and I, this was sort of like the shirt, and it had a lot of memories for me. Just a random chat we were having, weren't it? And then I said that I would love to get that shirt, but I could never find it. Next minute, he pops in my inbox. Yeah, have it. You can have it. Just that's it. Just give it, it you for free. Just give it me. So I'm like, well, I can't, I can't do that. That's ridiculous. Don't be that. So he said, what's your address? I'll send it. Flat out refuse. Yeah, have it my address. Then you give me a PayPal, man. Something I can wire your money to. But the the long and short of it is, after negotiations, it won't take any money off me. So, on behalf of Phil Wilcock and uh, Turfcast, uh, we're, I've donated on a chariot that, that he chose, which is uh, Sleep, which is uh, basically to help all the people in the South Ribble area, because that's okay. that direction, uh, to give us some money. So, I've donated 50 quid into their uh, into their thing. Uh, I'm just waiting for an email back to say this is the account to do it. I've, I've asked to do it, but there's nothing on their website to do it, unfortunately. But you can email them. Uh, but yeah, I'll I'll put a, a link in the comments of there. Fair enough. A big hand for uh, Phil for sending the shirt. A big hand for you for for donating the money. Um, but it's it is a class shirt. Like I say, and it's uh, very lucky to get your hands on it. I think I've got it in kids size, or I've got similar shirts. I don't know if I got that exact one. Um, but they're very rare to find an adult one these days. Of that, so it is it's class. It really is. 
Yeah, cheers, Phil. It's a good one. Another, yeah. Uh, fucking hell, let me, bit, let me get the confirmation of the name here before I start saying wrong names, like I always do. He, uh, I was just in the salon because obviously we're going down into tier four, um, up into tier yeah. four. That, um, we were up until midnight at the minute, and as I went in just throughout the staff at nine o'clock before we came live here, uh, we had uh, Gary Porter in, uh, and he was saying, and it, basically, I can never tell who people are. Oh, Joe's gone. Uh, I can never tell who people are. I'm still here, don't worry. I've just I've just disappeared off the YouTube. I pressed the button by accident. There we go. <laughs> I tried to keep it all professional. People come in, obviously, and they've got an hat on and they've got a mask over the face, and they're like, hey, bro, I'm at yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Bless you, no idea who they are. And then um, he said, "Oh, I, I, I watch it every time. Every time matches on, I have you there, uh, me and Turfcast, and I and I have the match there, and I, I, I love it. Yeah, my mate, my mate watches it. Well, who's your mate? With Kieran? With Kieran Phillips? Oh, yeah, no, mate, I know who Kieran is. Only one Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> I know who Kieran is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, he come in, bless him. But he, he uh, just give him a shout out because he's been in support in the salon tonight. So thank you very much. What was his name again? Gary Porter." Gary Porter. Gary Porter, there you go, got it. I, th I, th I think I have seen the name pop up every now and then on, on the... Um, oh, he's got a brew. He's got that's what the noise were. His, his missus has brought him a brew. His missus he's has brought him a brew. So he's, he's, so he's happy. But, uh, he, he did, you, might have, you might have heard him mutter fuck off under his breath then because you were annoyed that she came in the room. But I bet he's soon changed his tune when she put that brew on the table. Oh, um, a big shout out to Gary Porter. I can remember the name. I can never remember names, can I? <laughs> big shout out to Gary Porter. Um, thank you for watching the watch alongs. Um, and like I said earlier, that is something that I'm happy that we've started. That is a positive that we've had from 2020 the fact that we've started doing the watch alongs. And the next watch along will be for the next game against Fulham. Obviously, the main thing depending on if that game is actually on, because at the minute it sounds like it won't be on. If not, it will hopefully be back for the MK Dons game. But I do think I'm working that week, so me and Simon will discuss that. Um, but unless there's anything I want to add, anything you want to add, sorry, I think we're going to start wrapping up. No, I'm good. Thank you for having us. <coughs> no, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, excuse me. Um, we will be back definitely for a podcast next week. Fingers crossed we will be back for a watch along on um, the 2nd of January, 3rd of January when the game against Fulham is meant to be. Um, but it is looking increasingly unlikely at this moment that a game won't be on. Um, so if we don't see you for that, we'll see you for the watch along, hopefully. Uh, so if we don't see you for the watch along, we'll see you for the podcast. Uh, and if we don't see you for that, then we'll see you at some point soon. But we will be broadcasting this live on Facebook as well. Not live, obviously, it's as live on Facebook on Friday like we normally do. Uh, and if you don't already, please subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Give us a follow on uh, Facebook. Give us a follow on Instagram. And give us a follow on Twitter. And we will see you at some point in the future. Bye. In fact, one thing I will say before I sign off, that were a horrendous sign off. Happy New Year, everybody, and we'll see you next year.